Here we're going to look at Gantt charts, also known as cascade diagrams. Oh, if my screen doesn't flip too much, um, which is one of the last bits of the uh, the critical path stuff that we're going to look at. The only other bit is resource histograms after that. Um, so let's have a look at how we construct these. Um, this should be quite straightforward, but you need to do it in a certain way, so make sure you follow the way that I'm going to show you. So here's an activity network for a project. Early and late event times are shown in, the hour, in hours at the nodes. Okay, as we know, these are our events. These are our activities. Draw a Gantt chart to represent the project. So to draw our Gantt chart, um, we need a, I've put grids on and you'll see why. So first thing to do is to check when we start, which is obviously day zero, and how long it takes. So the last box is 16. So we need to have 16 kind of days. So I'm gonna take up my ruler here just for the first bit. You wanna use a ruler the whole time, but I'm not gonna use it after this. But I'm just going to draw a line across here, and we're just going to separate our days out. So, I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room. So, we're going to start here at day zero, and then one, two, three, four. Perfect. It's up to 16 days. Um, and you don't need to go past that. Well, hours it is, sorry, isn't it, for this question. And we're going to use this kind of timeline, this number line, um, to draw our Gantt chart or our cascade diagram. So one of the first things you want to do is identify, remember you've got some notes on this in your book, is identify critical activities and critical paths. because you're going to put them on first. So if we look through just a quick chat, you should be good at this by now. So A is a critical activity. B is not. C is a critical activity. D is not. E is a critical activity. F is a critical activity. G is not and H is. And if you're not sure how to do the critical activities, then watch the video on it and you'll be absolutely fine with it. So they're my, they're my um, critical activities. And that is actually a critical path, isn't it? A, C, E, F, H. That's the only critical path in this network. So we're going to put that on first. So critical paths get their own line on our diagram. Um, and there'll be no spaces. The whole point of critical paths is that they don't have a float, so there's no gapping between them. So we're going to start with A. A is four days. You can use a rule if you want to make things a bit easier for you. I'm just... I won't, it'll take me forever. So we're going to put A and you put them as a block on a row like this and label it in the middle. So there's A. C comes next, so C can start at four, last five, so it goes up to nine. So C will be there. E starts at nine and last three, so it goes up to 12. It should all make sense with the network. It should all tie in with it. F takes two and starts at 12. And then H takes two and starts at 14, and we're done by 16. So a critical path gets its own line. If you have another critical path, it would get its own line as well. If you had another critical path which has A in, so say it had A and then the next critical path went D something and D started at four, then you'd have, you could have then you could have D here, and then the next one after it, the next one after it, etc. etc. Obviously it would only go up to 16. Um, so you can do that as well. So if, if a critical activity is in two critical paths, then you don't draw it twice. You only ever draw any activity once on these diagrams. Critical paths get their own row. If an activity is in more than two critical paths, we would just start the next critical activity immediately after it, but on the next row. Hopefully that makes sense. But we don't have another critical path here, so that's it. On our Gantt chart, we then need to include every single activity and every single activity that is not a critical activity gets its own row and starts. We normally do this, you have to read the question carefully, but normally you start at the earliest start time. Sometimes it'll say so it finishes as late as possible, but most of the time it's as early as possible. So let's look at our first non-critical activity, which is B. So B can start at 4. So B is going to start here. 
it takes three days so that'll take us up to seven so we can fill b in here but we have this float time because it can go up to, to up to 12 so the float time this is 12 minus 3 minus 4 12 minus 7 so the float time is 5 so because it goes up to day 12 I indicate float with a dotted box on my Gantt chart so B is going to look like this so that record this, this shows that it's going to start as early as possible it finishes here but it can be moved anywhere within this dotted line section if it says finish as late as possible then you just have b at the end taking five days i don't know how long it takes so three days taking three days so if it started as late as possible to go here and then we just put the float there so just read the question carefully but most of the time you're starting it from as early as possible okay but it would look like that if it finished as late as possible but b can go anywhere in that dotted line anywhere in that part and it won't delay the activity so that's how we represent it on these and you get the idea now hopefully of what's going on here and if we do another activity so a b c d we haven't done d can start at seven so we'll go to seven d's can start here it takes two days so one two so it can finish at nine if it starts as early as possible and it's got to float up to 14 so then we go our dotted line to 14 and it looks like this so we get this whole cascading idea it's kind of cascading downwards you get this kind of slope going downwards um, and all these activities that are not critical get their own line and I would always try and pick the one with the earliest the earlier the start time the higher up it goes on my Gantt chart so I wouldn't really I try to avoid one starting here now it wouldn't be wrong but I'll try to avoid that if that if one started earlier I would put it here and then I'd make sure D started after after it Okay, so try and get it so that the we get this gradual kind of decrease like all the way down this sloping like this try not to have it so it's kind of doing this okay you should be all right in your exam but it's avoidable always have it sloping down critical paths always at the very top let's get this done so a b c d e f so now we need g um, and that's the last one we need isn't it so g can start at nine takes three and finishes as late as 16 so g starts at 9 takes 3 1 2 3 so it goes up to 12 and it can finish all the way to the end they're going to mark things like critical paths being in the right place no gapping in the critical paths they're going to mark all activities being present on their own line they're going to mark floats being nice and obvious and clear and correct so make sure that there's, there shouldn't be difficult things to get right, but it's amazing how often people rush this or that they take it up to, instead of taking it up to 12 here, they'll take it up to 11 by mistake. Um, or they'll, you know, they'll put the wrong length of activity in. They'll like B is three days, but they'll accidentally do it as two days or four days. Um, and there's lots of event times, lots of numbers. So you just gotta be really careful, really thorough and really confident in what you're doing. That will just come with practice. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, that's all the activities, and that's our first kind of Gantt chart um, or cascade diagram, this whole idea of it cascading downwards like this. That's question one. Um, so let's have a look at question two. So let's paste question two in here. It's a bit bigger for us. Okay, so same kind of idea. Diagram shows an activity network. Early and late event times are shown in days. Draw a Gantt chart, Gantt chart to represent the project. So we're gonna get our ruler out. Leave ourselves a little bit of room because we're gonna put the critical activities down. Get our ruler out. We want 20 this time because it finishes at 20 is the last thing that happens. Let's hope we can fit it on. So one, two, Just zoom out a little bit more. Get me a ruler back out. Can't remember what I got up to now. Let's, let's number them. I 
a lot of time they, they'll they'll lay this out for you so they'll give you kind of, some, kind of like a grid to draw this on i don't want to be quite generous with that 19 20. go through the exact same thing again so let's find our critical activities so a b is not c is d is not e is not f is g is not h is i is not j is so hopefully you're getting a bit more confident and slightly quicker um so you know what you're doing with this And then our path is indeed the same. So we go from A to C to F to H to J. That's the only critical path that we've got in this as well. So that's going to go right along the top of our Gantt diagram, our Gantt chart. So we're going to start at 0, A is 4. So we go up to 4. You know, it should be nice and neat, not near the mine. C can start at 4, goes up to 6. Oops. And last 2. Uh, F starts at 6, goes up to 13, so it's all checking out so far. F, H starts at 13, is 3. And J is 4 at the end. Okay, no gaps, it's a critical path, there should be no gaps whatsoever. Gets its own line. No other critical paths, so now I can start filling in other activities. So B can start at 0, so let's start B here. And again, we'll go for as early as possible. So B is going to go here. It lasts three and it can finish at four, so it's got one day of float. It's really easy to spot from these what, what your floats are as well. Uh, D can start at four. So let's start D here and it takes five days, so it's going to go up to nine. So there's D and it can, it's also got a float of one, it can finish at as late as ten. Remember, all I'm doing is using these information, the information in these boxes here. Dummies I don't include, by the way, this dummy here, don't include that. Uh, A, B, C, D. E can start earlier. I could try and start with that. I could go F next if I wanted to, but I'd always try and pick the ones that can start the earliest possible. So E starts at three. Oh, in fact, that means I've done this wrong myself, doesn't it? So I'll probably, probably throw E in here. You you probably get away doing it either way, but we'll put E here. And E lasts for four, so it's going to go up to seven. And it's got a float of one. So the reason why I swapped that round is because E can actually start earlier and D, and therefore it's going to keep this cascade, it's not going to go in and out and jut around. So D can start at 4, so that'll be next. And it went up to 9, didn't it? Float of 1, it's up to 10. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I. I can actually start at 7, so I'm going to go with I. And it takes 8 days, so we can go up to 15. And it's got a float up to 16. It's got a float of one as well. So I7 to, oh, I've done that wrong, haven't I? 7 to 15. Sorry. And then float of one. It's very easy to make mistakes when you're doing this. So be careful. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We've still got, haven't we? So G can start at 9. Take 6. So it goes up to 15 as well. Oops. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Float of 1 as well because it goes up to 16. Uh, done. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And again, I've got this cascading effect. Okay, if you don't do that, then you'd probably be okay as long as every activity is included, as long as it's got its own line and it's got all the floats correct, you'd probably be okay. So it wouldn't matter if you actually put kind of, say you had your critical path along the top, then you had B here, and you just went alphabetical and you had like D here and then E here, and then like say, 